depression, is the leading cause of disability worldwide, affecting more than 264 million people. The COVID-19 pandemic has already led to an increase in mental health needs across the globe, and the World Health Organization has predicted a significant rise both in the short and long-term impacts of this crisis. At its worst, depression can lead to suicide. Approximately 800,000 people die due to suicide annually, making it the second leading cause of death in young adults. Limited resources, a lack of trained healthcare providers, the social stigma associated with mental disorders, and inaccurate assessment are just a few of the barriers to receiving adequate treatment. Currently, diagnosis and tracking of depression still rely mainly on assessing self-reported depressive symptoms through interviews, methods that originated more than 50 years ago and are costly to track and scale. Can an innovative approach based on AI and data from smartphones and wearables help lower some of these barriers? In collaboration with Massachusetts General Hospital, we at the Effective Computing Group have gathered physiological and behavioral data over the course of eight weeks from patients with clinical depression. We have developed machine learning techniques for predicting the severity of symptoms from objective data captured passively and continuously from E4 wearable wristbands and sensors in an Android phone. To set a ground truth, Doctors conduct an interview to estimate a Hamilton Depression Rating Scale score ranging from 0 to 81, and we try to predict those values using only the input data we collect from our sensors. That data include electrodermal activity, or EDA, sleep behavior, motion, location changes, and phone communication and usage patterns. We were able to predict depression severity with less than 6% error across periods of time and different patients. Analyzing the features and their relation to depressive symptoms, we found that poor mental health was accompanied by higher asymmetry of EDA between right and left wrists, more irregular sleep, less motion, less variability in location patterns, and fewer incoming messages. Our results suggest heterogeneity of depressive symptoms across patients, showing greater variation when predicting depressive symptoms for new patients compared to across different timescales for the same patient. Given the unique characteristics of this data with a high rate of missing features and sparse labels, we developed a technique to learn a meaningful embedding from over 2,000 low-level features. This embedding improved performance of several machine learning techniques compared to using the raw features. In a related study, we processed sleep recordings from an in-home electroencephalogram, or brainwave monitor. An analysis of sleep characteristics from this data revealed that healthy controls have shorter sleep onset latency, wake after sleep onset, greater sleep efficiency, and shorter so total sleep time. The data collected in this study are sensitive, and assessing depression is personal. We showed that wearable and phone sensor data are highly identifiable, and even using common dimensionality reduction techniques still preserves identifying information for most patients. For this reason, we started exploring methods to preserve privacy while retaining information relevant for depression prediction. We developed a technique based on autoencoders and adversarial training, and confirmed its success in masking identifying information as measured by performance of a secondary user classifier. Our methods were able to retain information relevant to depressive symptoms and performed as well as the autoencoder baseline, while successfully foiling the adversarial classifier's attempts to identify users from the latent encoding. As this study continues, we aim to develop new artificial intelligence to improve evaluation and diagnosis of this debilitating disease and contribute to its meaningful subtyping. This can lead to enhancing prediction and early detection of response and relapse, inform more effective personalized treatments, and provide an opportunity for just-in-time interventions, with the ultimate goal of preventing most depression from happening at all.